Monday half past nine in the evening and I'm in London outside Victoria coach station I will be taking the mega bus overnight service up to Glasgow Buchanan Street and um, get in at seven o'clock in the morning why <laughs> I, I don't really don't know <laughs> must be out of my head uh, doing this um, but uh, it's gonna be an experience and, and uh, I can share it with you guys um, however um, it turns out I don't know yet but um, we'll see how it goes um, I've got to, about another hour and a half before the bus leaves um, but um, yeah I'll show you some of the sights on board and um, yeah let's see, we'll see how we, how we go shall we and, um, and I'll catch you in a little while cheers for now yeah I like to hang around the back of Victoria coach station to do these introductions and then go through the main entrance which looks a bit different in the dark doesn't it Almost enticing, although I may be stretching that a bit far because once you're through the foyer, it's a usual trudge through the concourse over to the far end where almost inevitably my coach always seems to depart from. And tonight I had the pleasure of stand 19, though I was able to find one of the metal seats to perch myself on. Um, and unfortunately, despite there being many services running at this time of the night, the Megabus office was closed. I did wonder if, if it ever opened, to be honest. And I'll put it this way, I wasn't particularly surprised. I watched a Flix bus service leaving for Frankfurt at um, 2200. The N815 service, uh, apparently. And I thought that looked like quite an adventurous trip. And mind you, I was still semi-enthusiastic at that point. And our service, the glamorously titled M11X, uh, calling at Glasgow, then on to Edinburgh, still had an hour before departure. Now, before that, uh, another Megabus service left for Glasgow at 22.30, as did a National Express coach bound for Edinburgh. Anyway, we were called to board at, I don't know, about 22.11, and I heard the words nobody wants to hear at this point. Tonight's service will be completely full. Oh, my God. Uh, this was the first point in the evening where I thought about just giving it a miss and heading for the nearest hotel. But then I thought, no, it'll probably be okay. Well, it's only eight hours, isn't it? Um, and then the, the next problem, right? It turns out what was supposed to be a megabus was yet another non-liveried coach in white. Uh, this was a VDL executive, uh, apparently, which I know nothing about, to be honest, uh, run by a company called McLean's, who I think was from somewhere in Scotland. Their first impressions were it looked really small from the outside. And once I got on board, it looked really cramped on the inside. Um, anything but executive. And it was already pretty busy as well. And I kept on going until I reached the back of the coach. This was a mistake. And the selfish couple in front had already reclined their seats to the max before anybody behind them had even sat down. As the coach filled up, it became more and more tight. A lady who'd missed her earlier coach and was rebooked onto this service was asked to leave. And a chap who'd reserved a seat uh, was asked to move uh, so that two people could sit together. And he was told to speak to Megabus and get a refund. Just dreadful, isn't it, that? In, in fact, it was so full, they actually asked if anybody would be prepared to sit in the crew seat at the front of the coach. I mean, <laughs> that, is, that is just completely unacceptable, isn't it? Anyway, the coach finally spluttered into life and we left Victoria 20 minutes late at 20 past 11. I'd already considered putting my hand up and volunteering to leave uh, so that somebody else could have my seat. But it was too late now, wasn't it? I was literally in it for the long haul. And still, everybody loves a trier, don't they? So about the coach. Well, it turns out Megabus had, a, you'll laugh when you hear this, right? Run out of buses. <laughs> so they're, they're obviously not that mega, are they, when it comes to fleet size? And whilst proper liveried Megabus coaches had already left half empty to other destinations, our undersized and oversubscribed service had been stuck on the concourse for ages while staff tried to figure out what they were going to do about it. Hence our late departure. And talking about being oversubscribed, by the way, I would love to be in that position here on my tiny little channel. 80% of people that watch my stuff aren't subscribed, uh, which I think is probably the norm, but if you were able to click that button, then I would really appreciate that. Thank you very much.
Anyway, we started to make our way through the streets of London and I was hemmed in right at the back. And I'll talk about the leg room, etc. a little bit later on when it gets lighter. That'll give you more of an idea of what it was like. But in the meantime, I just tried to close my eyes and hope for the best, really. And the journey was a lot smoother once we hit the motorway. Now, unfortunately, that didn't last long. Uh, because of overnight roadworks, we were diverted off the motorway and around Milton Keynes. So we spent what seemed like an age just negotiating roundabouts until we finally got back on the M1. And then the driver announced that we would be stopping at Sandbatch Services for about 30 minutes, uh, which at least allowed me to extricate myself from the seat and stretch my legs for a bit. Well guys, um, it's about, what time is it? Let me, let me get a proper time here for you. Took three o'clock in the morning and we're at Sandbatch Services. And I've got to say, this, this is just absolutely horrendous. Um, the, the coach is completely rammed. In fact, they had to boot one person off. And the, the people in front of me typically recline their seats all the way back there is I would say there's probably in terms of leg room there's probably an, an inch if that between my knee and the back of the seat and the seats are so narrow it's just absolutely ridiculous it's it's not a mega bus it's some random coach company called McLean from their, their Dale in Scotland you, know, you can't blame them uh, but they've obviously got these these guys in because they haven't got enough buses apparently that's that's what I overheard and uh, is, it, is it fit for purpose well you tell me because it's just that there is no comfort at all on this bus uh, I've got another four hours to go and I'll tell you what I will be so glad when this is over and I was you know I was thinking because I haven't, I haven't had a minute's sleep um, all, the, all the way up here and I was just thinking of a worse travel experience I, I've ever had and, and I can't think of one so <laughs> I'm kind of like well nothing can be worse than this but I hope you find it entertaining <laughs> because uh, that's kind of well that's that's uh, I, I just don't know what to say at the moment um, I'll be climbing back on board and squeezing back into my narrow seat at the at the back of the coach and just count the hours down now I think and then I'll speak to you again uh, when we get to Glasgow if I'm still a, awake uh, I'm sure I will be okay guys I'll catch you in a bit cheers for now right so I staggered off towards the coach and before the rest of the passengers made their way back I decided to have a look at the onboard toilet which was basic to say the least now, when I say basic, you know they provide a tap as a bit of a token gesture because uh, there's not actually any water available from it, of course, uh, nor is there any alternative like hand sanitizer. Uh, so there was absolutely no hygiene in the toilet. Great. Anyway, it began to get light, and by six o'clock we were north of Carlisle, just crossing over the border into Scotland, uh, with about 90 miles to run. Although I was barely awake at this point, daylight had started to reveal the true horror of my experience. As you can see here, there is no legroom whatsoever. And now granted the inconsiderate people in front had their seats reclined, but even when they were upright it wouldn't have made much difference. And there was a rather flimsy seatback table available, but yeah, it was in my lap. Totally useless. And the seats themselves, well, they were so narrow that I spent most of the journey pushed up against the side of the coach with the chap next to me, his arm digging into my ribs. Now the scenery outside gets better the further north you travel in my opinion, but inside the coach it remained a fairly unpleasant experience all round. Now one thing to note, the floor heating was absolutely roasting like all night, whilst the overhead vents blew out cold air. And I asked the driver back at Sandbatch Services if he could just turn it down a bit. But then he said it only had one set in. It's like, what? Um, in terms of other features on our chariot of dire, um, let's have a quick rundown, shall we? Uh, well, USB connectivity, um, yeah, that was a positive, to be fair, and it did work. Uh, the driver, yeah, he was fine, actually. I mean, it's a tough gig, this, isn't it? Now, he did give out several announcements over the deafeningly loud PA, 
Um, and he was also reasonably friendly when you, you actually got into speaking to him. Uh, Wi-Fi, <laughs> you've absolutely no chance. Forget about that. Um, storage, um, yeah, there were decent-sized overhead racks along both sides of the coach. And now let's talk about price. Um, and I paid ten pounds ninety-nine, including the one pound booking fee um, that Megabus charge. And um, normally, for this trip, I would say that that's great value for money compared to the train. But uh, you know, personally, there were just too many downsides to the service that Megabus provided. And if I really, really had to put myself through this again, then I would probably pay a little bit extra, use National Express. Uh, you can do a similar trip with them for about four pounds more. Uh, their coaches, by the way, looked much more comfortable uh, with smaller passenger loads. But, um, you know, if you are able to sleep solidly sitting up uh, for eight hours, then pay your money and go for it. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Well, as you can see, we were right in Glasgow city centre now. now. I was really looking forward to getting off this thing. Although we were late, uh, traffic hadn't built up too much, uh, so we were able to make our way towards Buchanan Street bus station mercifully quickly. Now, like Glasgow, the last time I was up here, I had a great time looking around. Uh, some really nice places and friendly people too. Now, unfortunately, this time, I just wanted my bed. We arrived at Buchanan Street 35 minutes late. It's a big bus station this isn't it and yeah next time I'm up here maybe I could try out a city link service or something similar. Um, just a journey in the day and uh, no longer than four hours in total I think. Um, oh look there's a National Express coach there if only. Anyway uh, we pulled up on stand right next to it actually and uh, yeah I was eventually able to reclaim the use of my legs and I uh, just wandered off into the street to have a look back and summarise the journey. Okay then guys, just got to Glasgow on the Megabus, uh, which wasn't actually uh, a Megabus at all. Uh, it was another coach company. Uh, <laughs> What do you think of that? Uh, I thought it was truly, truly horrible uh, with no redeeming factors whatsoever. It was cramped, it was smelly, it was late. Honestly, I, it's an experience I never ever, and believe me when I say this, I never ever want to try it again. Anyway, I did it so that you guys don't have to. Remember that, kids. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, guys, cheers for now.